Welcome to the Batch Chemical Reactor Workshop. In this workshop, we'll examine how continuous and batch processing are used to control the chemical reactor. In the first uh, part of the exercise, we'll just examine the normal control during a batch processing. And in the second uh, part of the exercise, we'll change the maximum feed rate uh, to the unit and uh, examine the impact of that on the batch. The process that we'll be using in this exercise is a full dynamic simulation of a batch reactor. In the initial part of the batch cycle, uh, a feed A is added to the reactor until it fills up to a certain level as indicated by the level measurement. At that point uh, the feed is uh, cut off and the temperature is released, temperature controller is released to uh, drive the temperature of the batch up to a reaction temperature. Uh, at some temperature once it's reached then a second uh, material is added, a catalyst to the uh, reactor. The uh, flow rate is determined by the operator set maximum flow. There's an override on pressure and temperature to keep those from exceeding some constraint limit on the operation of the uh, process. So our selector is a low selector in that case, so the lower of the three is then selected in the control of the uh, second material to the unit. After the batch is complete, then a uh, valve is opened and the batch uh, contents are then dumped. So let's get started with our workshop. The, the, here we see the uh, operator input of the uh, maximum flow uh, to the unit. Uh, there's the override uh, control loops on temperature and pressure that you see are working in conjunction with the operator specified value to set the uh, set point of the second material that is added to our reactor. So the uh, temperature control of the vessel is done with a PID. Its output is going to a splitter block and that splitter block is used then to adjust either a cooling or a heating valve uh, to the uh, unit. The uh, batch logic is assigning a, a batch ID to each batch and you can look at the different stages of the batch and the progression through that information. At the very start of our batch we see that the uh, level uh, rises as material is added. Once it is filled then the temperature controller starts to apply heat to the unit to raise the temperature. At some point, once the temperature has reached a certain point, then the second material starts to be added, shown in red here. Uh, you notice a, a change in the rate of uh, the uh, heat valve being closed as that's added because this is an exothermic reaction with the second material, so more heat is being generated. The, uh, at some point, the cooling valve, shown in green here, must open to maintain the temperature of the unit and keep it from exceeding uh, the operator specified target for temperature. Uh, as the batch progresses you can see here near the end of the batch that the temperature valve has gone almost fully open to maintain our temperature at the once all the material of uh, the catalyst has been added then the reaction is stopped. Uh, material is uh, then uh, starting to the dump valve is open and the material from the uh, reactor then is uh, removed. Uh, as uh, the level starts to fall you notice that the um, temperature controller is automatically just closing the uh, temperature valve since there's less material to cool here and at the point where the uh, vessel is completely empty then the batch logic uh, then uh, automatically uh, closes the uh, the cooling valve by adjusting the uh, temperature controller output. So this is a typical batch. So let's look at how the maximum flow specified by the operator impacts the batch cycle. So here we'll change it from a, a value of a 10 to a value of 12 uh, as we can see in this case with a, a value of 12 for the uh, feed rate, the uh, cooling valve uh, in the cycle had to go almost fully open. 
Let's look at what happens if we change it by more than that. Let's uh, change it by a significant amount. So we'll go from a value of 10 to 20 as the uh, maximum feed, uh, 15, excuse me, uh, maximum feed. Uh, with a value of 15, if we look at what happens uh, during the cycle, we become limited during the cycle, but the uh, temperature never rises up to the uh, constraint limit. So we're able to maintain our, our target during that time frame all the way up to the uh, end of our batch cycle. So we're just on the verge of having a problem here with uh, this uh, feed rate, but we were able to, in this case, uh, complete the batch uh, using uh, uh, maintaining the uh, target feed rate. Let's uh, look at what happens if we change the uh, feed rate even more. In this case, we're going to go up to a value of uh, 20, so we're doubling the maximum feed rate. Uh, when we do this, then uh, we'll uh, look at its impact then on the uh, batch cycle. With a uh, value of 20, we see that uh, during the initial uh, phase of the um, cycle, uh, the cooling valve really has to open much quicker than before because of the exothermic reaction. And what we see is, is that we're not able to achieve the target of 20. The uh, temperature override has kicked in and has limited the amount of flow to keep the uh, temperature from exceeding the override set point. So throughout the entire batch then, the uh, flow is limited to just a little over 15 to keep from exceeding our uh, constraint limit. So uh, the uh, constraint in this case was very active throughout the batch and allowed the uh, maximum to be put through without exceeding the constraint on the vessel. So we hope this exercise has been helpful to you in understanding batch uh, control of a reactor and hope you'll use this exercise to further explore the control of this unit.